Morning, Pete. Morning. Um, when Logan Couture is going through what he goes through and, you know, gets a, basically a dentist visit between periods and gets numbed up and, and playing what he's playing through, what does that do for the guys around him and, and how much of a jolt does that give the team uh, maybe emotion to see him going through that? Well, I think when you're when you see your best players uh, with that type of commitment level, you know, refusing to to uh, use injuries as an excuse and, and uh, you know, the behind the scenes stuff and what, what they're going through to be get prepared to, to play and, and help us, uh, obviously that's motivating. And, you know, he's not alone in that group. Uh, we've got some other guys there. Pete, uh, for those of us that don't get to see Mark Edward Rossick play every day, we, we, we've just been impressed to how he's kind of that, that pairing, I guess, of blanketed that top line. I guess. What are what are they doing, in your opinion, to just shut that that trio down? Well, he's been doing this for for a decade. You know, just watch Team Canada. Watch you know, listen to Mike Babcock talk about him. You know, when they name World Cups, who's one of the first guys that always is is named. Um, you know, he's not a statistics guy. He's, he's just a, a, a hockey player. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, there's very few guys I've coached where I rewatch a game and, you know, he plays almost mistake-free. You know, there's, there's a lot of games I go through and I can't, I can't find one decision that I would make differently watching the tape back. And that's, that's really rare. So uh, he's a special guy and a huge part of our team. Hey, what did you uh, what did you make of Timo Meyer last game? And do you sense that he's getting a little bit more confident with each each game in the series? Yeah, yeah, he's a bull. You know, he's uh, he, he's definitely jumped in. And I think we've told we told all our young guys prior to the playoffs that you know we're going to give some guys an opportunity. It might not be long because uh, we have some depth here and and we've got some good players sitting out. So it, it's on them to to make it that we can't take them out of the lineup. And I think Timo's uh, done that. I think, you know, it's hard when you rewatch the game or you get to the end of the game and see, you know, that he's having an impact on the game in a positive way. Uh, that's how young guys have to handle opportunity. And I think uh, he, he's done a great job of that. Uh, sorry, Pete. Uh, Todd was just in here talking about the importance of winning face-offs tonight to sort of maybe get away a little bit from the, from the matchups, you know, defensively. Uh, face-offs have been obviously a huge key for you guys in this series. What, uh, certain things you, you see as far as turning, turning that around from what you saw in the regular season? Uh, for us? Yeah, face-offs, yeah. Well, I think what's turned it, turned it uh, around is they're, they're one of the four teams that, that's worse at it than, than we are. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know, that's the only answer. <laughs> The, the Oilers were talking about flushing that last game. For them, it's a 7 nothing. They turn around. Do you believe momentum can carry over from game to game? And, and is that obviously your goal tonight? No, I, I, think, I think response is a, is, a, is a much bigger weapon. And, uh, you know, when you've got a character group, and it's a long road to get into the playoffs. You know, every team that's here, one of the 16 that's left, or 15 now with Calgary out, has dealt with adversity during the year, and has obviously been has obviously responded in the right way during the year in order to give yourself a chance to get you know 95 to 110 points to get in. So um, you know we're no we know we're going to get a response tonight, and uh, that's a dangerous thing, and we've got to make sure we're ready for that.